Hey guys, how's it going? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is when it's bloody cold and we're out on our motorcycle doing a bit of a camp, what can we do to make the sleeping part of it a little bit warmer? So what I'm gonna go through is obviously the shelter, uh, what we're sleeping on, what we're sleeping in, clothing, and a few little extra uh, gadgets that we, can, uh, that we can use and what we shouldn't use. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is shelter and when it comes to shelter size matters now if you're using a tarp or a hammock this doesn't count because obviously with a, um, a tarp or a hammock you actually you, you, you don't have a concealed area from the outside so if you've got a tent that creates you a sealed area now this is where the size comes into it. Obviously when we're in there, we're generating body heat. Now it's not a lot, but it's a little bit. So if you have a big tent, maybe a stand up, a stand up tent, it's not gonna make any difference whatsoever. But if you have a smaller tent, and the smaller the tent, the more warmer it's gonna be inside. Cool, simple as. All right, let's get into uh, what we're sleeping on. All right, guys, so what we're sleeping on. So we've got things like the uh, that big thing over there is the regular blow-up mattress that you'd get from Kmart, um, stretcher, self-inflating mattress, and then down here is the Cedar Summit, White Man Magic. Oh, my God, it's bloody fantastic. Um, uh, sleeping mat, I suppose you'd call it. Now... So when it comes to what we're sleeping on, it's all about the bubbles of air. The bubbles of air are our friend. Obviously when you're on the ground, if you're on the ground and it's cold, all that coal just instantly comes sucked into us. Now if we were to go, oh well, I'll put down a tarp like that, just a you know, thin little tarp, that won't do anything whatsoever. The heat goes from there and then into you, straight through, useless. Same with this, this is like a uh, picnic blanket. I use this sometimes um, and all it's mainly, it just makes it cozier. It doesn't provide any, um, what do you call it, uh, any barrier from the cold. The cold hits one side, goes straight through because there's just, it's just thin stuff. There's no bubbles of air in that. So that's no good. So we've got to have some type of thing that lifts us up off the, uh, off the ground. Now, if we were to grab this, this is all, you most probably already know this, you most probably slept at a mate's place or whatever on one of these things, and if it's been cold, you know that um, you, you do get cold on these. So what this is, this is just one huge, massive air bubble. So when you're lying on this, the ground's there, and the ground's cooling that and cooling all the air inside it. Your body heat is then going straight through and in, and you just, you just get nothing. So that is totally, absolutely useless. So let's get rid of it. All right, so the next thing is a um, self-inflating mattress. So basically you open this up and it over, over about, you know, maybe half an hour or something, this thing just goes up. These are fairly cheap now. Um, you can buy these. These are really good. I used to use these for uh, quite a few years. Um, so it's kind of like a foamy thing. So it is one big air cell, but there is foam in there, so um, it does hold the hold the heat. So this works um, pretty damn good, I reckon. But for comfort reasons, uh, I moved to the Helinox stretcher. So with this thing, you're up off the ground. There's no, you're not touching the ground whatsoever. It's only this part, which obviously, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The only problem with this is, it kind of does the same thing as that first mattress, the big air. So you've actually got all this air. So your body temperature's on there, and then it's getting left, and it will just come out like that. So the way to fix it, so if you use a stretcher, whether it's a Halinox or whatever it is, what I worked out to do was, when I had all my motorcycle gear and bits and pieces, I would actually slide all that stuff when this is actually down on the ground, like that, 
I would slide my motorcycle jacket and my pants and whatever bits and pieces that I had and that actually really did the trick. That worked really well. Another thing that I do when it's really um, cold is Nay, she went to um, the material shop, got some polar fleece, just polar fleece stuff. She put some little bloody strap things on it and this just gets strapped over that like that. So that just adds that little little bit of extra um, comfortability from um, the cold wires. All right, so the last thing is this magic piece of equipment. I can't rave to, uh, anymore about this. So this thing is doing the same. It's laying on the ground, and of course it can suck up all that cold and your body heat goes through it, but it doesn't. Um, so this is a whole series of little air pockets. I don't know, you, you blow it up and it all just blows up one thing, one side, and then the other side. So there's two separate sides to it from the air. But in, this particular one um, has some type of insulation in it. And I don't know what it is, I call it white man magic stuff. And I can sleep on this, it's comfortable as hell compared to the same as the Halinox stretcher is just comfortable as. Um, but no, there's no, I don't have to do anything from the, um, the cold part. The, just no cold comes through, your body heat just retains in that, it just works bloody fantastic. So out of that, I suppose what I'm saying is, like I said, the, um, the little bubbles of air are your friend. So the self-inflating mattress or the Cedar Summit one, obviously on this particular one, there is no bubbles of magic, but that's, it doesn't matter because you're being held off the ground, so you're not getting that constant ground um, cold coming up. Uh, just got to remember with, with this is that put all your gear, what you can, underneath there, so then that keeps traps um, your body heat um, with you and not just letting it piss off out into the uh, open air. Cool. All right, so what we've got to do now is the sleeping bag. All right, guys, so the sleeping bag. Actually, before we do the sleeping bags, here's a 30-second advert. Check out the Worldwide Man Cave shop. It's where you international guys can buy our stickers and patches and bits and pieces. If you want to help support the Biker Bits channel, check out our Patreon page and become part of the Keep On Riding crew. Prefer to leave us a tip? No worries. Just do it at the Man Cave tip jar. And don't forget, leave us a message. Why not check out the Biker Bits Australia website? Got heaps of bloody cool products on there. Sorry, we don't do international delivery though. Just click on the show more, all that little triangle, and I'll show you all the info and links to all this stuff. Thanks guys. All right, so sleeping bags. Number one uh, tip with a sleeping bag is before, once you've, you know, it's all been rolled up or scrunched up or whatever, you've been riding all day, you pull it all out, Remember to shake the absolute shit out of it. Just really shake it up. Hook it up. You know, just do all that to it. Because while it's been all crunched up, every, all those little fibres and whatever type of um, material you've got, whether it's down or polyester, whatever bloody stuff they whack in them, they get all crunched up. And what you want is you want it to all be apart because that's what creates all those little pockets of air in there. So shake the shit out of them. Um, another thing is with when maybe looking at buying a um, sleeping bag, this is kind of a, a mummy bag. I don't know if you can see that. Bring that back. So it's like tapered. You know what a mummy bag is? So it goes a V like that. The reason why they do that is um, the smaller the bag now, when I say the smaller the bag, not the thickness of the bag, it's the amount of space inside. So obviously if you're in a mummy bag, yeah, you think you kind of like sleeping like that. The reason to do that is because it's the same with the tent. The smaller the tent, uh, the warmer it's going to be. And that's the same with a sleeping bag. So <clears throat> instead of you know, having a huge uh, bag where you've got lots of air space in there, get a small one. Depends, some people don't like being in, in sleeping bags. But if you can, get it as small as possible that you're comfortable with and that will make it warmer. Now another thing is ratings. When you see a rating, and this is a minus 10, don't believe them. 
Um, cause they have, I don't know, they have ratings for something and then they have a comfortability rating. But look, if I was in minus 10 in this sleeping bag, I'd be freezing my backside off. Um, so don't believe that if you go, oh, it's only going to get to zero degrees overnight while we're out there camping. Oh, I'm only going to get a zero degrees rated one of these. It won't be. It, they, I've never heard of anybody having one. Oh, people start bloody commenting now. Um, that, uh, that that rating is, is you just uh, always get more than what you need, basically. Now, I don't know about what what uh, the material, where it's down works better or half duck, half whatever. I don't know. You'll have to find that somewhere else. I haven't used enough of different types and done all the testing to actually work that out. Basically, all this stuff is just what I've learned over the years. Now, the other thing to sleeping bags is blanket if you bring along a blanket and I have this one for those really cold nights it's just a it's just a thin blanket it does it it weighs nothing you know and it, and it does pack down nice I used to use this and I used to put it over the sleeping bag until Dave from Ballarat said Mark what are you doing put it in the bloody sleeping bag and you will see the difference the first time I put it in the sleeping bag I woke up and I couldn't believe it it was just like night and day. So if you get a blanket, don't don't put it under your sleeping bag. I reckon that's going to work any better. Don't put it on top of your sleeping bag or over it. Put it in the sleeping bag. Now whether you pull this out and you stuff it in and then you have it so that it wraps around you in, in the sleeping bag, you can do it like that. Or you just pull it out and you just jam it in there long ways. And what, what that's doing is it's just filling up that airspace, and of course it all crinkles up, and in there is all little bubbles of air. <laughs> that really, really works well. Actually, guys, there's one more thing with the sleeping bag, if you're looking at buying one, and that is the sleeping bags that have the draft stopper. Now, I'll show you this. What I mean by a draft stopper is this little piece of see that there you see that's a little kind of like an extra flap in there and what what that does is because obviously when you're in the sleeping bag you know up here there's going to be some air and all the air the warm air wants to go up and and out that little draft stopper down there stops all that air all the all the hot air down there from coming out will helps to stop that air coming out that really works well i've slept without one and then with one and there is a difference to it that's, that's a good tip for when you're going, looking at uh, buying a sleeping bag. All right, guys, so the next thing is um, basically clothing wearing. Number one thing, wear a beanie while you're sleeping. Most of you guys, I know a lot of this stuff's pretty simple stuff, but this is for you know the people that are getting into this stuff or haven't thought about it. Like me, at some stage I never thought, why not wear a beanie? Wear a beanie because a lot of our heat comes out the top of our head. Works brilliant, do it all the time. Um, I have, now I, I wear these, Just these are um, Sherpa long johns, whatever you want to call them. They're 100% merino wool. So I'll actually sleep in these, but I also use them while I'm on the, on the bike when I've you know, got cold riding to do. Um, but basically with the clothing, it's layers. The more layers that you have, um, the warmer you're gonna be. And there's times when you know, I've pulled up and I'll hop into a pair of jeans and um, a hoodie just to, to, to wear around the campfire. Um, and if it's really cold that night, I'll actually just stain everything, hop in the sleeping bag and sleep like that. Now, sometimes what can happen is you can overheat because you've got too much on. But when you're, when you're overheating, you go, oh, geez, it's bloody hot. Oh, I need to get out of this thing and take some stuff off. It's not a problem because you're overheating. You want to get into the get cool. When you reverse that, if you don't put it on and, you, and you're waking up, I don't know if you, I've done it bloody plenty of times where every half an hour I'm waking up going, oh, it's bloody cold. I should get out, I should get out and get some more clothes on, but it's really cold out there. Oh, I'll just try and get back to sleep. Go back to sleep, next half hour, wake up shivering, and then you just have a shit sleep uh, by the morning doing that. 
So I, in my eyes is it's much better to put too much on and then go, shit, I'm getting too hot, I'm starting to sweat or whatever, rip it off because that's quite easy, you'll happily do it. But when you're freezing, the idea of getting out um, of the sleeping bag where it's relatively warm as opposed to out in the tent, um, you're not going to want to do it and then you'll just, you just, yeah, it's just shit. Cool. All right, so now, little gadget bits and pieces. The first one I'm going to do is don't do, and that's <laughs> as tempting as it is, don't use your little stove to heat up the inside of the tank. Everybody's heard of it all before. Don't do that because that's, uh, that's a warning, warning, death imminent type stuff. If that <laughs> tips out, it's quite easy to happen. It, once it goes on fire and then you're trapped in this bloody tent, um, that's not a good thing to do. The last thing I've got is these things, hot hands. You would have seen them. There's uh, quite a lot of uh, different um, brands. So these are hand warmers, these are toe warmers. You can get super warmers, so they're like the size of that. Like in here is two, two of those. So I've used these for putting them in my gloves, putting them down my chest. Obviously the toe warmers, they have a sticky backing on them put them on my uh, socks and then put my motorcycle boots and it just makes it lovely for when you're riding along on a cold day. Brilliant. Now, this says up to 10 hours and that says up to eight hours and you're going, oh yeah, sure. They do, they actually last that long. I've used these, I've used these for years. Um, so that's so for if it's gonna be if you're gonna be camping somewhere, you're going with some mates and you're jumping on the bike and we're gonna be bloody camping up the river and you're looking at the weather thing and you're going, shit, it's gonna be bloody, you know, minus two, minus whatever, zero degrees. Um, grab some of these. Stick them on your on your socks when you're in the bloody um, sleeping bag. Put these down your down your top or just have them in the in the um, in the sleeping bag. These will keep you toasty warm. And that's, you know, obviously 10 hours, 8 hours. It's going to last you all night. Um, yeah, bloody good things. If you don't know what they are, it's obviously two compounds in there. And then when the air gets to it, it creates a chemical reaction, which then generates heat. Bloody fantastic. Well, there you go, guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Um, I know most of you guys know all that. It's all very, very simple stuff. But at one stage, I didn't know this. And if people had told me and said, hey, Mark, like Dave from Ballarat did with uh, putting that blanket in there, I never knew to do that. I was always doing it wrong. <laughs> so um, yeah, obviously lots of people, not everybody knows everything. And hopefully I've shared it out there for you guys. All right, I'm shutting up. Keep on riding. And if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.